Okay, in this video, we're going to go ahead and assess the peripheral arteries uh, or examine the peripheral arteries. Uh, in this video, we will go ahead and begin by palpating the most important arteries that we need to be feeling for. Um, the first ones that we're going to go ahead and take a look at are here. Go ahead and turn your head this way. Um, now, you'll see here that he has his jaw here. You're going to go midline, and then you're going to go down from there. And you're going to go ahead and press down uh, very gently with your index finger and your third finger. Go ahead and look on up again. So I just wanted to, to help you all find where it is that you're going to be palpating. So um, midway between the jaw, go ahead and go down. And go ahead and palpate for the carotid pulse. Now you're actually feeling for the carotid arteries right now. It's very important that you do not push on both sides at the same time if you're assessing symmetry because you might just end up blocking um, perfusion to the brain and then causing some real troubles. So just make sure you do one side at a time. So um, you should be able to feel these uh, arteries um, quite well. When you're feeling these, uh, you know, feeling these uh, different arteries, make sure that you're noting as you're palpating um, just uh, how, how, um, how much uh, of the pulse you're feeling. Um, you you kind of rate it on a zero to four scale. Zero being you feel no pulse, and four being you feel quite of a quite a bounding pulse. Um, so you kind of try to to you know assess it that way uh, or describe it in that manner. Um, usually when we have patients that you know um, end up um, um, dying in the hospital, this is one of the ways that we assess to make sure that they have passed. Um, we we do check the carotid arteries. So anyways, after you check the carotid arteries, you want to come down here and you're going to be in uh, you're going to be checking the brachial pulse. Now, to check the brachial pulse, what I want to indicate to you all is go ahead and um, you're going to start at the axillae. Go in the medial portion of the axilla here and press down a little firmer than you would the carotid arteries and press down with that index and the, the middle finger and here I'll, I'll do this. So you're going to come down here about midway and you just want to press down there and I can feel that one very well. Um, since, these carot since these arteries like the carotid artery and the brachial are so close to the heart, um, you should be able to feel them pretty well. Okay. So then once you feel those, uh, we're going to come down the arm, okay, and we're going to go ahead and feel here on the radial side, we're going to check for the radial pulse. Again with the same fingers, you really don't have to palpate this one too much. You can feel the, the pulse bounding normally in patients that are, that are healthy. And then what you want to do is, um, after you've gone from the carotid to the brachial to the radius, then you're going to come down here and you're actually going to check a femoral artery. So the femoral artery here, this is the one that we want to check. Your aorta comes here, it separates uh, into each uh, lower extremity. Um, we will not uh, go ahead and expose this patient now, but what you want to do is uh, wherever, your, um, uh, wherever your umbilicus is, you're going to come down here. It should be in the middle of this area and your iliac. So you're going to press down here Okay, and even through the clothes, um, you should be able to feel a slight um, pulse. In the critical care unit, we also use um, the femoral arteries to assess um, if we're having good circulation. While the people here are compressing this area, we're feeling down here to feel if we can feel a pulse um, as we're compressing the heart. So this is a this is another way to to feel to see if the heart is pumping adequately. So after we do that we're going to come down here to the leg portion and um, this area uh, that we're going to be checking, uh, we're going to check the popliteal uh, artery. Now this artery runs behind the knee, okay? So here's your patella, you're going to come right around and when you do this you're going to ask your patient to flip over. So right now we're in the supine position so we're going to ask him to flip over into the prone position okay and when you do this you're going to ask him to go ahead and flex his leg halfway like that and then you're going to have to bear down a little hard here in order to feel that pulse okay you might have to wiggle your fingers around in order to feel it so when you do that okay you 
You might have a, a little bit of a harder time to feel this one. But you should be able to feel it. It's very, very slight here. But you can feel it. Okay? And then we're going to go ahead and ask him to go ahead one more time. Get again in the supine position. And that's the way you would palpate your uh, popliteal artery. You're going to come down. And on the dorsal side of the foot... Um, and you're going to slightly dorsiflex the foot here, not too much. And you're going to feel the top portion here, just medial, um, just the medial portion of that dorsal part of the foot. You're going to press down, and you should be able to feel a good pulse there. And I can feel a good pulse there. And then the last one we're going to be checking is called the posterior tibial. Okay. Now you're going to locate your medial malleolus just inferior to that, just right here, okay, you should be able to feel another pulse. This probably might be easier on the other foot for me. And sometimes this one takes a little more palpating. Okay, and I can feel it right about here. Okay, so then we've now assessed the carotid up here. Okay, we're really close to the heart, carotid, brachial arteries, down here femoral site, popliteal, dorsal, and posterior tibial. Okay, now we've gone throughout the body assessing to make sure that we have complete circulation throughout. Now another thing I, I do want to touch on is as you are feeling for these pulses, you want to make sure that you're feeling um, and palpating uh, and assessing the heart rate, okay, making sure that you do have a rhythm there, that you don't have um, just abnormal beats, um, because you will feel that. If the heart is pumping rhythmically, you will feel the pulses also in an in a abnormal uh, rate as well. So you want to make sure you, you, you do assess the heart rate as you're, as you're palpating, just taking a couple of beats and uh, measuring to see how many per minute you have, the rhythm like I just mentioned. Now um, also you want to make sure that you're assessing both sides to see if they're both symmetrical, if you have just about the same bound um, uh, or what they call the amplitude um, of the pulse, the rise of the pulse as you're feeling it. You want to make sure both sides are pretty much about the same because what ends up happening if, for example, I was checking, uh, let, let's say, because most of the time it's here in the lower extremity because they're farther away from the heart and patients normally come in and they have some occlusions in the legs, sometimes even in the femoral arteries. Uh, from stenosis uh, and they end up having claudication here on the legs. So what ends up happening is let's say that somebody came in and they uh, they have a claudication um, from uh, the femoral side, okay? So let's say that this whole area was claudicated, was not getting enough circulation. So you, would, you wouldn't feel a, the same pulse on this uh, popliteal artery as you would in this one. So this is a time, this is why it's so important to assess both sides and to check to make sure that the pulse is the same on both and then come down this way and check to see as well. Another thing to look for that will be very indicative that you have claudication in the area is the fact that you see how here he has a lot of hair growing. You will not see this in a patient that has uh, had just um, bad circulation in this leg just because of the fact that follicles do need circulation nourishment from the blood just like anything else and if you do not have enough of it you will not have hair growth another thing is that you may have you may see muscle atrophy the patient may describe uh, feelings of tenderness there you, when you touch the area it will be cool uh, if you check capillary refill for example you can check it on the nail bed or you can you can also check it on the actual skin if the color does not come back within two seconds just like this if you push down let it go and you see one two three okay so if that takes longer than two seconds you may be seeing um, maybe some type of impairment in the arteries um, and you know I see this a lot in the intensive care unit that you know most of the time we cannot feel good dorsal artery um, pulses and most of the time we do not even hear the posterior tibials and it's because most of the patients come in with different types of comor comorbidities such as diabetes, 
um, heart failure. So they do not have good circulation to these portions of the body which are farthest from the body. And thus, you know, uh, they don't have good pulses here. Um, so those are things you want to you wanna definitely look for. Now, um, you, do, you, you do and can use your stethoscope um, for one of many reasons. Um, most of the time, you can use it to, uh, like we did in the past videos, that we were using the stethoscope here on the temporal area um, to hear for breweries. Now, uh, what a brewery is, it's just a turbulent sound of, of, of blood going across some area that may be obstructed or there, there's something in the artery and it's, ca it's, causing, like a, it's like causing like a whoosh sound there. Um, and, you know, sometimes you can even hear if there is something like that in the arteries of the, of the heart going on, it actually vibrates and you can actually hear it in the carotid arteries or in the subclavian. So that's why it's so important to be assessing these things. So, um, you know, I got, my, I got my stethoscope here. So what we want to do is when we're assessing this um, using our stethoscope, um, give me just a second. When we're assessing with this with the stethoscope, you want to put your stethoscope here at the temporal area first. And what you're hearing for is you want to make sure that you don't hear that that whoosh sound. That's what what you would call a thrill. What it's called a brewery when you can put your stethoscope on it, and you can hear it. It's called a thrill whenever you put your put your uh, hand on it and you can feel it. So you feel for the temporal. Uh, you feel for the or you hear for the carotid subclavian area. You can come down. And you can also hear at the side of the iliac and also renal. And then uh, you can ask the patient to go ahead and uh, flip over to the prone position. Because when you're listening to the renal area, you got to understand that this is your spine here. Okay? Now, your, your, um, your kidneys lie um, right about at the, the bottom of where your, where your um, ribs end. So just about this area. So you want to be able to put your stethoscope on there and go to each side and be able to see if, if you can hear anything. And also remember your aorta, your aorta lies right in the middle of it. And you want to make sure the aorta also doesn't have any type of stenosis um, or, or any type of brewy sound. So um, those are the different things that you want to check for. And then uh, go ahead and go, come back to the supine side. Um, we had we had felt for the femoral arteries, big 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 deal to also check your femoral arteries. Always always assessing both sides. Okay, when you're checking a brachial, you want to make sure you assess both sides. You're checking a carotid, you want to make sure you're checking both sides. You're checking down in the in the, in the lower extremities. Also, you want to do that as well. Okay. Um, one last thing that you know I didn't touch on um, was uh, the contour. Of the of the pulses um, when we're feeling them. Now, uh, you know, normally uh, we see in the intensive care unit we're able to actually see um, the arterial waveform. Um, the way that I can best describe it is just the fact that you know it has sort of a dome shape to it. It comes up and then it comes down. It has a little it has a little notch to it uh, that we call the dichrotic notch. So it comes up, comes down, dichrotic notch down, and then up, down, and it correlates with the heart rhythm. So um, usually that, you know, I, I, I would not know how to describe this when you're, when you're actually uh, placing your finger on it. I think when you're checking with your finger, all you want to check for is the actual pulse. You know, if you have, a, for example, I said we put it on a scale of 1 to 4, 4 being bounding, 0 being no pulse at all. If you say 4, you know, it's a, the pulse is about a 4 plus, you want to make sure it's about a 4 plus on this side as well. The waveform, I think it, it would be best seen on, a, on an actual graph when you're checking and you have something called an arterial line where you, you're able to actually see and, and um, be able to assess the actual waveform that way. Um, okay, we're going to go ahead and stop there and we're going to continue with the, the rest of the assessment of the peripheral arteries on the next video. Uh, please tune in.